Johnson Wax Program. Good evening, everyone. The makers of Johnson's Wax present the melodious medley of modern music and magnificent McGee mendacity with Rico Marcelli's orchestra, Marion and Jim, as our premier proponents of preposterous prevarication, Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Marcelli starts off with Cosi Cosa. Wrap it up, Rico. Cosi! Johnson's Glow Coat, think of beautiful polished floors that require no rubbing or buffing. Put a little glow coat on your floors and linoleum and you'll save yourself hours of work. Seventy-nine Wistful Vista, an argument of long standing is being continued. The topic is, shall McGee or shall McGee not go get himself a job? Molly has the affirmative side, and, well, guess who takes the negative? <laughs> Silly Watson is an attentive listener as he polishes the furniture in the living room. I'm telling you, McGee, you got to do something. Heavenly days, you can't just sit around the house all your life. Oh, sure. There's nothing like good, honest labor, is there, Silly? Wow. <laughs> I said there's nothing like good, honest labor. Now, is there? No, ma'am. That's the worst thing what there is. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Molly? Old Phil's got the right idea. <laughs> oh, he has. <laughs> McGee, you haven't done a stroke of work since you sold the store. Well, that's why I sold it, so I could get a little rest. I'll tell you, Molly. I'll get me a job at the racetrack this summer, accounting. Accounting? And what do you know about accounting? Accounting, I like the horses. <laughs> <laughs> You get it, I see. Yes, ma'am. You're missing the side of the desk there. If you're going to polish the furniture, do it right. Yes, ma'am. Now then, McGee. You know the old story of the ant and the grasshopper. Twas the ant that worked hard and come off better in the end. <laughs> but shucks, the, the grasshopper had a lot more fun, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't the point, McGee. You know that fable, silly. What? You know the old fable, Sil? Fable, boy. Dad read it. You know what a fable is, don't you? Oh, yes, sir, a fable. My old man is, boss. Your old man is what? <laughs> fable. He's so fable he can't hardly walk. <laughs> Heavenly days, this is getting us nowhere. 
McGee, it ain't good for you to be sitting around doing nothing. You want folks to be calling you a loafer? Who's calling Fibber McGee a loafer? Everybody will be. You, Sil? You call me a loafer? Why? You calling me a loafer? No, sir, boss. Not, not me. I ain't calling you one, even if you is one, boss. No, sir, not me. <laughs> Why don't you go down to the Wistful Vista Employment Bureau, McGee? You said you would after the first of the year, you know. What day is this? The 13th. Uh-oh. Hello, bad luck, boss. Oh, nonsense, silly. Uh, how far is this here employment bureau, anyhow? Well, uh, it'd be about far enough so if you was on your way there and you had a radio in the car, you'd hear the music goes round and round seven times. <laughs> <laughs> I see. About three blocks. <laughs> now, come on, Phil, we're off. What? I says we're off. If you is going to work when y'all don't have to, boss, you sure is off. <laughs> Never mind the wise fashion. Get your hat and come on. But, boss, you, you, you ain't going to get me a job, is you? <laughs> Shucks, I probably ain't even going to get me one. But you got to chauffeur me down there to the employment bureau. Heavenly days. Chauffeur you down to get a job. <laughs> Wait till I get the atomizer and I'll come with you. Atomizer? What fur? So as if they give you a job with a pick and shovel, you won't have to spit on your hands. Kelly and his men playing Lady of the Evening. And going from Lady of the Evening to Gentleman in the Afternoon, we find Fibber McGee and Molly, chauffeured by Silly Watson, approaching the Wistful Vista Employment Bureau. Straighten your tie, McGee. Huh? What for? Well, you want to make a good impression, don't you? Where is it, Silly? Why? Where is this here employment place, Sil? A little old job place right over there, boss, upstairs. Upstairs, huh? Yes, sir. Why are all employment joints on the second floor? Chuck, it's bad enough to have to go get a job without climbing up to the second floor. Pull well, over there, Timmy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Gotta get them brakes fixed. <laughs> you stay down here and watch the car, Sil, so nobody will steal it. 
Yes, yeah, sir, but I don't reckon y'all have to worry much about that, boss. Hurry up, McGee. Now, don't rush me, Molly. Shucks, I ain't, I ain't got many more hours of freedom left. Now, don't, don't go away, Sil. No, sir. Now, for heaven's sake, McGee, try and talk sense. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Uh, you please haven't got a... Please, please, one at a time. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, sis. Uh, my name's Fibber McGee, and I come down here to see if you've got any kind of... Uh, a... Excuse me a minute. It's the mailman. Uh, have you got anything for us today, mailman? Yes, I have. Seven letters. Seven letters? Yes. G-L-O-C-O-A-T. Seven letters that spell a new, easy method of keeping your floors and linoleum shining like new. Why, you just pour a little glow coat onto the floor and spread it lightly over the surface with a soft cloth or the long-handled glow coat applier. You don't have to bear down or rub it in. You don't have to do any rubbing or buffing. Glow coat dries in 20 minutes and shines as it dries, making your floors and linoleum sparkle like new. Dirt can't stick to the beautiful bright polish. Soiled spots can be easily wiped away. Order Johnson's Glow Coat from a nearby dealer, and ever after, you'll have better-looking floors and much less work. Here are your letters, madam. Thanks. That all today? Yeah, that... Oh, oh, no, no. Here's a postcard. Let me see. It says, hope you're saving up to one-third by buying the large-size can. Well, goodbye, madam. <laughs> there goes old Harple. <laughs> Still holding it? the bag. <laughs> what was it you wish? Me husband here wants the job. Hmm, got a trade. Got a trade what? I mean, what kind of work do you want? Oh, well, uh, well, let's see, sis. Uh, I sold smoked glasses for the last eclipse, <laughs> and I had the popcorn concession at the last Republican convention. Hmm. I bet you can hardly wait for Halley's Comet. <laughs> What's the name, please? Fibber. I said name, not occupation. <laughs> oh, smart, eh? Well, that's the name, sis. Fibber McGee. Hmm. Barn. What do you think? <laughs> well, Chuck Molly, she snapped at me. Be your age. What's, what's that? that? I say, what be your age? Oh, oh, my age. Well, sir, I'm too old for the Boy Scout plan and too young for the Townsend plan. Oh. <laughs> you get it, Molly? I said. Ah, it ain't funny. Okay. <laughs> Man. Yep, I was in the... Cavalry. That's right, cavalry. How'd you know, sis? By the horse feathers. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of work do you want? Light. <laughs> he just wants something to keep him occupied, miss. Mm. Uh, what is their offer? Well, uh, we got, uh, let's see, we got a call for a dishwasher. What does it say? <laughs> Dollar a day and meals. Meals? Uh, how many? Oh, I don't know. It's out to the Wistful Vista, topless number seven. George, give it to Popolis, proprietor. <laughs> Skip it, sis. I ate there once. <laughs> what they need is somebody to eat the dishes and wash the food. <laughs> what else you got? What do you know about dogs? Hot or cold? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, what kind of dog, sis? Somebody want a chiropodist? No. Poppenheim Kennels wants a dog trainer. Very good salary and all expenses, but the applicant has got to be an expert dog trainer. Why, shucks, sis, that's me. I used to be an expert dog trainer. McGee, mm. well, you wouldn't know a Bermuda Beagle from a Greyhound bus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, sis. They used to call me Pedigree McGee when I run the kennels in Pittsburgh for hunting dogs. Pedigree McGee, the prize promoter of perfect pointer pet pops of Pittsburgh, PA. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Have you got any references? What you mean, references? She means to vouch for you, McGee. Oh, shucks. Just ask anybody, sis. And if they say they never heard a pedigree, McGee, you can just put it down to professional jealousy. Oh, Why, did you ever hear of the Hound of the Baskervilles? What about it? I trained him. Oh. <laughs> so you didn't get anything on the brain training water spaniels, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it, sis, but I had a great day Never one. mind. Never mind. You got the job. You'll get it. Here, take this slip and go to 119 West Elk Street, the Kuppenheim Kennels. What's the charge, miss? We deduct 50% of the first week's salary. Good luck. Thanks, sis, but don't worry about me. I can handle it. Sure. You'll soon have them dogs eaten off your hand. <laughs> or, or, or your leg. <laughs> Good day to you, man. So Good long. day. <laughs> Give me Mr. Smith's office, please. Mr. Smith, I just sent somebody to the Kuppenheim Kennels. Well, 
No, he's just a big bag of wind, but at least we'll get half of his first week's check. And he ain't going to last much longer than that. Yeah, what? 119 West Oak Street. What? What? That, that Mrs. Kuppenheim, she, she wanted a tutor for her two children? Oh, for the love of Mike, I, I sent him to the wrong Kuppenheim. <laughs> wonder, Fibber McGee, as he and Molly are chauffeured to his new job by Silly Watson. Now, he doesn't know that he has the wrong address, where they want a children's tutor and not a dog trainer. Now, here they are, approaching the house. Why, my, it's a real nice house for raising dogs. Oh, I don't know, Molly. Dogs appreciate nice things as much as humans. Where's the candles? I'll be around in the back. You coming in with me, Molly? Oh, I don't believe I Oh, need. shucks, come on. Well, okay. Go ahead and ring the knocker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the joint, all right. They got Kuppenheim on the mailbox. Well, it don't look like a doghouse to me, McGee. How do you do? Uh, are you Mrs. Kuppenheim? Yes. This is the man from the Wistful Vista Employment Agency, man. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, the tutor... Uh, come right in. Please. You that Molly Tudor? <laughs> Must have some high class hounds here. <laughs> Careful, baby. Um, uh, please sit down. Oh, uh, this lady is. Uh, oh, this is my. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. McGee, ma'am. I brought her along to show you I was a married man and responsible, and <laughs> not no young whippersnapper to go around running around nights and necking the cooks. <laughs> Oh, I, uh, I see. Yes, that's, that's fine. <laughs> it is a lovely house, Mrs. Kuppenheim. Kuppenheim, please. Cup, Molly, not cup. <laughs> <laughs> Natural mistake, though, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> I, um... I feel that a nice environment is essential to the proper education of my little ones. You mean you raise them in the house, ma'am? And where did you think? Well, uh, we thought that uh, you know how they are when they get rambunctious, ma'am. Uh, please. My little ones never get, uh, as you say, rambunctious. Uh, where are the little pups, ma'am? The what? <laughs> the little ones that you were talking about. My husband is anxious to get acquainted with yeah. her. Oh, I see, yes. Uh, quite natural. Uh, well, they're having an afternoon nap upstairs. Afternoon nap, huh? <laughs> How old are they, ma'am? One is nearly a year old, and the other is two and a half. Uh, now, uh, what daily routine would you recommend for the little darlings, may I ask? Uh, huh? Well, she means how would you learn them to do things, McGee? Oh, uh, well, sir, my usual system goes something like this, sister. First, I, uh, but listen, these are pretty well behaved, ain't they? Why, certainly. House broke? <gasps> I beg your pardon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a long while, ma'am. <clears throat> Go on, McGee, tell Mrs. Poppenheim how to train them. Okay. Well, sir, in the first place, you've got to get their affection. 
quite true. Oh, quite true. Yeah. You know, like knowing where to stretch them. Behind the ears or onto the stomach. And see? Yep. And you got to give them a bath every month. Every month? That's Why, sure. If you wash them often or their skin gets dry. You betcha. Then they got to be taught not to take no food from strangers. Why, why, certainly. Why, sure. Otherwise, one of the neighbors is liable to poison them. Good heavens. Oh, don't, don't worry, ma'am. I'll take care of them. <laughs> I'll have them frisking around here like nothing in no time. You got glow coat onto the kitchen floor, ma'am? Well, I don't see what that has to do with it. So is their little nails won't scratch it so easy, ma'am. Oh, I see. Uh, now then, uh, do I understand that you are competent to instruct them in all branches of study? You betcha. Well, that's excellent. I can assure you they're very well behaved. Oh, not too well behaved, I hope. <laughs> Heavenly days, I wouldn't give a hoop for one that didn't... Uh, chew on a shoe now and then. But then... Uh, how about their health, ma'am? Their nose is cold? Well, what a question. Now, I don't and know that... And please. I... They've been troubled much with me. Me? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, don't get up on your high horse, sis. They all get them sooner or later. <laughs> now, I'll tell you how to handle them little fellas, ma'am. They gotta have a dry place to sleep... And you got to give them a nice bone once in a while for their teeth. <laughs> and you got to teach them not to bite folks. To bite? But... Well, after all, that is scarcely within your province as tutor. Now then, are you prepared to give them primary instruction in arithmetic, geography, and spelling? Heavenly days, arithmetic? Must be pretty smart pup. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you want me to learn them to play the piano. <laughs> I, uh, I am afraid I don't appreciate the humor of the situation. Of course, they are too young now, but I certainly consider an appreciation of music essential. <laughs> oh, shucks, Cuppy, if you ain't the card. <laughs> Hear that, Molly? They got to appreciate yeah. music. <laughs> How about sending them to dancing school? <laughs> Why... Why, of course, dance in school. Then French, German, Latin, and possibly a trip to Europe. <laughs> oh, quit it, Cuppy. You're killing it. <laughs> I heard a pig Latin, but never heard a pup Latin. <laughs> Ain't that a scream, Molly? <laughs> and a trip to Europe. <laughs> Don't forget you'll have to get him foreign licenses. There's something here that I don't understand. Licenses? Why, what do you mean? Why, shucks, ma'am. All dogs has got to be licensed. You know that, being an old breeder. An old breeder? Oh, please, why, who are you? Who, me? Why, shucks, I'm the kennel man you sent for, sis. Kennel man? I knew it. Why, this is all a horrible mistake. The butler will show you out. Wilcox! 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 Yes, madam. It, did you summon me, madam? Show these imposters to the door, Wilcox. There he is, madam. Come along. Thank you. Thank you, Wilcox. Uh, uh, that would be all. Thank you, madam. Uh, one moment, Wilcox. There he is, madam. Uh, those two terrible people seem to know you, Wilcox. Oh, yes, madam. I, I, I was slightly acquainted with them, madam, uh, when I was a radio announcer. A radio announcer? Good heavens. Dog trainers. Radio announcer. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me, madam. I'd like to forget them. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Wilcox. Uh, but tell me, for what did you announce? Oh, for a very excellent product, madam. It's Johnson's Wax. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The uh, makers of glue coat, I believe. Yes, yes, madam. And if you permit me, madam, I should like to tell you that after many years of research, scientists in the Johnson Wax Laboratories perfected a <laughs> no-rubbing floor polish that works like magic. They named this remarkable polish glue coat because it puts a glowing coat of beauty on floors and linoleum. Makes them sparkle and gleam without one bit of rubbing or buffing. Why, you'll be amazed to see how quickly glow coat changes your dingy, dull floors to beautiful, polished surfaces. 
But your greatest surprise will come later when you see how long the glow coat polish lasts, how it protects your floors from wear and dirt, and gives your whole house a well-cared-for look, and at the same time saves you hours of work. Look for the attractive yellow can with the words, Johnson's Glow Coat. And that, madam, is how I used to announce it. Oh, yes, yes, I, um, I remember. Uh, haven't you forgotten something, Wilcox? Oh, uh, forgotten, madam? Oh, so I have, madam. You save up to one-third on a large-sized can. <laughs> uh, is that all, madam? Yes, Wilcox, that's quite enough. Thank you, madam. <laughs> interesting item on our program. As you probably have read in the papers, Fibber McGee has been awarded the Diamond Medal as the World Champion Liar by the Burlington Liars Club. Mr. O.C. Hewlett, founder and president of the club, is with us tonight. We're going to ask him to say a few words on his favorite subject. Mr. Hewlett. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to express my appreciation to the makers of Johnson Wax for this opportunity to clarify a certain situation which has arisen in connection with presenting the medal as world champion liar to Fibber McGee. Cries of professionalism have arisen that must be answered. All I can say is that while some people consider Fibber McGee a professional liar, there is no such thing. There cannot be such a thing. Lying is an art, not a profession, <laughs> and is practiced even by its most ardent students as a labor of love. <laughs> We're told from childhood that there is no profit in lying, and where there is no profit, there can be no professionalism. So I am glad to confirm the award to Fibber McGee with the assurance that no liar ever loses his amateur standing. And with, <laughs> and with the sincere hope that he may go on to bigger and better lies with the medal of the Burlington Liars Club resting on his manly bosom. Did I say resting? Excuse me. I meant lying. Thank you. And 
And that, friends, is that. Until next Monday evening at this same hour, when Fibber makes another attempt to leave the ranks of the rank unemployed. Until then, may I remind you that just as the best housekeepers use Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Glow Coat to keep their houses clean and shining, so the most particular car owners keep their cars sparkling with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. This is Harlow Glowcoat Wilcox, who has been spread around and around and has come out here. Good night. <laughs> The selection lady of the evening is from the Music Box Review. This is a national broadcasting company.